life, that's it. That was Zoe Bowie, a.k.a. Chris Phillips. He's our guest today. I refer to him as Mr. Las Vegas. But Chris disagrees. He thinks Wayne Newton is Mr. Las Vegas. Well, maybe he is. Here's my guest, Chris Phillips. Thank you. Gosh, I, I love Las Vegas. So right, You're referring to uh, Wayne Newton. Well, of course. Right? And, and I know that he was a, a big... What is the term? Hero, inspiration oh, he was, he was, to you? He's, right. he's an iconic figure of not just uh, the entertainment field, mm -hmm. but uh, as far as being one of the mascots of this great city that, you know, he'll never be replaced. I think anybody who's ever held a microphone reveres him. Uh, maybe, you know, throw in Elvis and Sinatra. And for me, guys like me, you know, I, right. I, you know, when I was a kid, my parents would take, you know. King to the shows? I was going to say, yeah. other parents would take their kids to Disneyland. They oh, would right. see Mickey Mouse and my parents, they would take me to the Sahara to see Don Rickles. And so that was my upbringing. So guys like Wayne Newton and, and those uh, people who graced the iconic marquees, particularly through mm -hmm. the 70s and 80s when I first came here, or my idols, for, for sure. The first show I ever saw was Tony Orlando at the uh, Las Vegas Hilton and it changed my life. And from that point forward, I had no intention of wanting to uh, go to college or, or even write music and tour, but I wanted to be a Vegas guy. So the fact that you would uh, say that is very flattering, but uh, maybe I'll deserve that someday. <laughs> well, well uh, look, I mean, uh, sooner or later Wayne will be gone, and there would have to be another Mr. Las Vegas. Right? I mean, that's the nature of life. But, but you know, you, but you then, I mean, you kind of owe to your parents. I mean, that type of influence um, for you growing up, and your parents were. Yes. Um, I mean, like your dad. Was your dad an attorney? My dad was an attorney and a uh, city councilman. He was a vice mayor, actually, uh -huh. of Tempe, Arizona. Right. Uh, my mother was a first grade teacher for 35 years, but prior to teaching, she was an opera singer. So, so, so you, you would have thought that your parents would have wanted you to go to college, get an education, do something. You would have thought right, if they you're, were smart. You're involving <laughs> law or teaching, right? But instead, they, they had a, a son that wanted to go run off and become a showgirl in Vegas. And <laughs> so I, I, I've been very fortunate that I've been now calling myself Zoe Bowie for 30 years. Uh, next year will be 30 year anniversary. but. My dream from the very get-go was to uh, come to Las Vegas and represent what I think is uh, an important part of the city, and that's classic entertainment, where uh, you know it, it's a very uh, intimate thing with an audience. You know, there's a lot of shows that are incredible, but a lot of times I I tend to see that there's shows that have uh, almost you know, like a, a wall between the, the show and the audience, where as the entertainers I grew up mm. uh, really admiring are those who got very uh, in, engaged with their audience and every show was different. And you felt like when you went there, you, you, you got something special and unique. And so that's what I wanted to bring to Las Vegas is that energy and that kind of one-on-one uh, -on -one relationship with the audience that I felt growing up being inspired by the entertainers I used to go see. And so, uh, you know, I've done about 6,000 shows and there's not been one time I've walked on a stage with any preconceived notion of anything I was going to say or do or choreography. It's just a free for all. And so, uh, you know, I, I, as I was mentioning well, earlier, I, I show up and I grab a, a cocktail and a microphone and I, I just wing it. You just do it. <laughs> well, that's because there you go. We really, really because you have the skill to uh, to wing it. You know, uh, but you know, in addition to your your parents. Um, being uh, in the acad academia world, oh, sure. um, they were also in the music world. Didn't they kind of like tread on both? Uh, yes, both my, my worlds? father, prior to becoming an attorney, was actually a uh, piano player, uh, kind of a jazz piano player. He had his own band called the Skyliners mm -hmm. back in the 50s. Right, it, sounds, and, it sounds like a familiar name. <laughs> yes, and so every yeah. Sunday morning, yeah. uh, I would wake up to the sound of my mother singing along with my father playing the piano. Mm -hmm. And Your mother was in the group? Uh, no, she had she oh. met a uh, little bit after he uh -huh. had got out of the band. It was in law school, but they, uh, for many years, would sing the American Songbook, the the traditional standards, mm -hmm. and they loved you know all the uh, entertainers that, from Tony you know Tony Bennett to uh, Sammy Davis Jr. was a huge mm -hmm. influence, and they would sing this uh, catalog of music as I was 
you know, laying in yeah. bed on a Sunday morning, and it was very subconsciously inspiring to me. And so that was the kind of music that uh, really influenced me to want to become a Vegas entertainer, because uh, contrary to how I primarily make my living, which is a high energy nightclub hip hop rapper right. party show, my my passion truly is the old standards, where you had the entertainer that came out with a tux and a cocktail and. All he had was his wit and a right. tan. The classic, the classic. <laughs> the classic entertainment where, you know, you, you got the, the big 30-piece <laughs> orchestra and the spotlight. Yeah. And to me, that was the epitome of, of what Vegas was all about. And particularly with, uh, I mentioned Tony Orlando. Mm -hmm. It was the first time I'd ever come to Vegas. It was 77, 78. Mm -hmm. And we went into the showroom, sat down in this uh, beautiful, back then, you know, the tuxedo-clad uh, maitre d', right. all the ladies in pearls, and everybody was dressed up the way it should be. Uh, and in the middle of the show, Tony Orlando comes out, and of all the people in the showroom, in the spotlight, he's dripping his, his charismatic uh, character filled with uh, charm and energy. And he leans down and he said, welcome to Las Vegas, young man. And there was something about that magical energy that just made me want not necessarily to sing or entertain, but to make people feel good and, and to put smiles on their faces and, and to be that Vegas guy. And so, uh, incidentally, I sing. But my, my whole motive and uh, purpose for doing this is, is simply to make people happy. And when people come here, they get to feel the genuine, classic, maverick spirit of what this city is about, I hope. Yeah, I, a long time ago I represented uh, Sammy Davis Jr., but he didn't motivate me right. to, to sing. He motivated I, sure. more into the law. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but the um, <laughs> I, I was. But there's an energy when he came out on stage and he just exploded with. Oh, with all his, those guys were oh, so, I mean, like so uh, so iconic. You know, I I met Frank Sinatra backstage at Caesars um, in the day yeah. and. Course. Saw him at the DI and this uh, and uh, a number of times and at the Sands, and and, and you know saw Elvis in the, in the early 70s well, at the International. So, but he, that's he, what happens when you're as old as I am. But I, I, well, I I'm not far behind. I, I, I was listening to um, um, uh, Barry Manilow, oh, he's and amazing. he was um, explaining that when kind of following up on what you're saying, that when he sings. Um, he sings all the time with his eyes open because what motivates him to continue singing? He's like you. He's been, you know, you did 6,000 shows. He's, and he's about to break Elvis's record over there at, at the uh, Westgate for right. consecutive shows. Correct. Which is quite a feat to... Right, and as you know, you know I don't care what you do. You do it day in, day out. It becomes somewhat routine, you know, at times. Oh, sure. But um, you know, he says every show is so new to him because he sings with his eyes open and he focuses on the audience when he's singing with his, with his eyes open yes. and he sees the impact of what his music does to the sure. audience and that's what gets him going every time yeah every time and i'm sure he's like me in the sense that i would still to this day pay to do what i get paid to do if that makes any sense and i know he's one of those people just like wayne they can't retire. They can't get it out of their system. It, that's what motivates them to exist, and I think that's what keeps them going, like it's doing with me at this point. Uh, you know, uh, when you're 18, you think, hey, let's get in a band, you know, beer and chicks. Mm -hmm. And then you wake up and, you know, I'm, I just turned 56 a couple weeks ago, and I'm thinking to myself, what in the world am I still doing this for? It's so juvenile, and it, it's, it's, it's to some degree ridiculous, but, you know. Makes people happy. It makes people happy, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to run this uh, train down the track until the wheels come off. And, yeah. And uh, I, I'm still having as much fun today as I was when I started this, you know, 40 years ago. Yeah, let's take a look. You have, um, I'm going to say, uh, my words, two sides to you. You have a split <laughs> personality. Uh, one side you, uh, you describe as uh, the big, uh, the party van. The other side is the big van. Oh, we have some of the party band here at uh, Fremont Street, oh, where goodness. you're often there, for an, and you have been for a lot yeah, of years. Yeah, we are. We're excited that they yeah. just uh, extended our contract for the 14th year, going into 2023. And, you know, in my opinion, Fremont has turned into the real Vegas. 
if you want the real excitement of what this city uh, is, is famous for, mm -hmm. you can't go wrong with Fremont. It's just thousands of people from all over the world every night having a blast. You got various bands mm -hmm. and entertainers, and you know you can go in and out of hotels, and it's, it's a lot of fun, a lot of energy. And so, I, I couldn't be more proud to be uh, the you know we're down there on the main stage it's called Third Street Stage every Thursday and Saturday. And, and uh, you can't beat it. So if you're down on Fremont on Thursday or Saturday, this is what you will see. <laughs> And that, and that's you know, uh, that's what you do. I mean, you you bring you bring a whole you whole a whole back a whole band, dancers. I mean, you have a glamorous you know, inclusive big Vegas show going on. You know, and I got to thank my wife that I have uh, been with now for seven years, because up to this point I, I've had my show, but it wasn't until she came along that said, you know, you really need some showgirls, in your thing, and so meticulously every night for three years she has sat with a pair of tweezers and applied what is now up to one million rhinestones <laughs> on 12 to 18 gorgeous uh, yeah. ornate showgirl costumes that we now incorporate in our show. But God bless her for, for bringing that element, which is so important to me, to our show, which yeah. I think helps uh, put it into that category of a classic Vegas show. Because when I think of Vegas shows, you know, you think of Jubilee and Follies Bridget and, right, and yeah. all these things that had the elaborate sets and the showgirls and the costumes, and you don't see that much anymore, mm -hmm. uh, particularly when it's relating to backing up a singer. You know, you have the production shows, but, you know, in, in the old days, you'd go see these guys uh, that we talk about, and they would, they would have this chorus of, you know, people behind them, dancers and showgirls and such that... Uh, to me, kind of define what a Vegas showroom is supposed to be about. And, and, and so and if we're able to incorporate that into what I do, I feel like we're doing our part to keep that tradition alive. And your dancers really dance. Oh, they're very I mean, they're just trained, not walking pro, around with, pro, oh, with no, the head, so. headdress. I mean, they're, they, uh, we they, have a team of yeah. gals that are incredible, and they work yeah. real hard, and they rehearse, and they have choreographed routines to a lot of the music we do, and it's growing and growing. And uh, we just did our Christmas show a couple days ago at the Italian American Club, right. and we actually had to build out the stage in there just to accommodate our dancers in the band. We have a big horn section and and whatnot. And so uh, I now have a very special guest in our show. However, um, I've never really done special guests, but she's five, and she is my daughter, and yeah. that is Ava Rose. Ava Rose has become yeah. a considerably bigger celebrity than I've ever been in 30 years. <laughs> She gets the attention wherever we go. We did a big charity thing at the Tropicana this past uh, week uh, uh, for the Golden Rainbow. And, and I have learned that when I walk into any social situation that I now no longer exist. So, so it's you, all about Ava Rose, and she's five years old. So you're, you're repeating what your parents have, oh my how they raised gosh. you. But she has this, this energy that she, she walks in and she captures the room. And the thing that I'm worried about, though, is, uh, Ed, I had her on stage with me Sunday. I gave her a little number to do. She sang, and she comes mm -hmm. out in a little costume. She immediately, after the show, comes up and said, Daddy, i I got to be honest. I, I really enjoyed myself, but I need more stage time. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, oh, boy. Okay. Well, I, at least maybe uh, she could take over and take care of Daddy sometime soon, I'm hoping. Yeah, I, I thought you were going to say, uh, she came up to you and said, Daddy, I think I want to go to law school. To the opposite that oh, your parents Lord. did. If that isn't a uh, reason to stay in school, is to, to think that she could be following in my footsteps. God help me. Uh, you mentioned uh, the Zoe Bowie thing. Um, I know there's, you have, uh, you got a story about that. I mean, weren't you performing somewhere and you 
pulled up the pulled out the name. I don't, I don't quite remember. I know you've told it here before sure, years it, ago. It, yeah. It's it's a rather dull story to be honest, yeah. but it's it's fascinating in the sense that uh, prior to becoming a singer, I was a long-haired heavy metal drummer mm -hmm. all through the '80s. But my dream, you know, ever since I was a kid, was to be this flamboyant singer, so I could be Elvis and wear the rings and 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 try to you know do what I can to make people feel good. And so it wasn't until I was in my late 20s, actually, that I had some friends back in Tempe, Arizona, that were in this kind of 80s retro-themed novelty band. And their singer got sick. And they came to me and they said, Chris, uh, we can't find anybody. We know you want to sing. Would you like to fill in for this guy and learn all these 80s-type songs? Had not I had never held a microphone, never, sang, never yeah. sang a song. I'm 28 years old. Never had a lesson. Of or how, did, how did they know you even sung? They, they knew sung? that that was my passion because okay. they, I'd been in bands with them as drummers and such over the years. And, and so I said, you know what? I'd love to do it. And just literally within that second, it clicked. I have to hide behind a character. I'm not going to go out there as Chris Phillips. Who in the world wants to see that? So I thought, well, maybe if I pretend to be David Bowie's kid, Zoe Bowie, <laughs> okay. no matter what happens, I, I could fall on my face. Uh, he does Who have, cares? He does, I'm David he, Bowie's kid. He does have a kid, Zoe Bowie. He, he right? does. And, yeah. and incidentally, he had yeah. changed his name, though, when he was a uh, young man. He's going to, the other way. To Duncan Jones <laughs> is his name. So I picked uh, up the should name. Been, that he, should have been Chris Phillips. <laughs> yeah, so I've been hiding behind this guy, Zoe yeah. Bowie, for 30 years. And really has nothing to do with David Bowie, but it's this... Uh, but, but is it, uh, it's, it's the best and the worst thing I've ever done by calling myself that because it, it, one, it's catchy and people remember it. Right. But a lot of people think with that connotation that it's a, a David Bowie tribute show. Mm. And it has nothing to do with that. So but, there you go. But is it a persona that you take on? That's, I mean, that's is Zoe precisely. Bowie it's a Zoe different frame than, of mind. than Chris Phillips? I mean, because you have this you know dichotomy between the, uh, the, the the party band and the big band. Is that? connect with the Zoe Bowie, Chris Phillips division? You know, the, the thing division. about uh, being Zoe Bowie is that... Is it, it Bowie or Bowie, by the way? It's Zoe Bowie. Okay, but, but how does he... Is he David Bowie or David Bowie? Uh, he goes by David Bowie. Okay. And so I just picked up, uh, you know, this, this, this silly kind of rhyming name uh -huh. where I was able to be 100% genuinely myself. I wouldn't know how to be a character. Like all these, these talented performers go up and be... Uh, in, in these musicals where they become these characters and they, they have scripted lines and blocked choreography, I wouldn't know how to do any of that stuff. So when I walk up on stage, you're getting exactly who I am from the second I start till the time I end every single show because I wouldn't, I'm not talented enough to, to become well, anything well, else, I don't think. No, but, it's, it's kind of like you. But I, I love, I, you know, that way people get a genuine sense that what they're seeing is absolutely for real. It's There's kind of, nothing fake about it. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of like you took the name so you could be honest with your, who you are. Yeah, yeah but, you know, you, you, should, I, you should be a therapist. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're yeah, you're I, digging down deep because you're exactly yeah. right. Yeah, because you're exactly it's, it's right. almost, it's almost I like... I wouldn't know how to be Chris Phillips. Right, it's almost like, you know, the masked man and you yes. can just be who you are. No, that's and, that's yeah. precisely it. Okay. It um, allows you to, yeah. to uh, unmask who's on the inside. and So, mm -hmm. no, in, no inhibitions. We have another uh, Fremont Street uh, clip. Oh, gosh. Okay, and, and this is, once again, this is the, the party band, uh, right. Chris. And then a little bit later in the show, we're going to show you the, the big band, uh, Chris Phillips. That's 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 the uh, the the party the party guy, and but but you like 
you, as you were saying earlier, you like the uh, the big band, uh, Chris Phillips, a little bit better, right? That is my passion. Yeah. Uh, I, what you saw is obviously a lot of fun. I enjoy mm -hmm. it, and I, I think it brings a lot of energy, uh, not only right. to that set of circumstances, but into my life that keeps me going. But my passion musically is certainly the, I guess you might say it's the soundtrack to Vegas, the old standards, uh, Tom Jones, Elvis, mm -hmm. these guys that uh, yeah. I was so influenced by myself. And so it, it's a lot of fun being able to do the other show to satisfy the other side of my personality. So they couldn't be more opposite ends of the spectrum in terms of the, the, the musical styles and, uh, you know, physically the, the, the energy that, that you right. punctuate the song, you know, with your body. But, but, it's, but, one it, and, but it's a tribute to your range and ability well, at the or, same time. Or how absolutely disturbed I am. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure. But it, it, the, the thing that's nice about the big band show is I actually get to stop in between songs and talk. Mm -hmm. And for me, I think I'd rather, I'd just soon talk uh, and sing some songs than sing and occasionally say a word or two. Right. I really enjoy being able to have this engaging uh, relationship with any given audience on any, any given night and just see where it goes and, and it's just a free-for-all and you know hopefully it's humorous at times but uh, more importantly than that I as I, I mentioned earlier what's most um, important to me is that it's genuine because I th when I used to go see shows you can tell in two seconds if something's genuine or if it's something that they've said night after night after night and it's just it's a scripted uh, you know show right. from head to toe and, and those are great very talented. Yeah, you have to have it. some filler ready, right? But I yeah. love seeing somebody who's, you know, on the edge of the cliff, and you, you're never quite sure if they're gonna if they're gonna fall or if, <laughs> if they're gonna uh, keep it together. And so that's the challenge on any given night for me. And so, hence, did I mention cocktails? <laughs> <laughs> and I should. I, what we should mention is that when you do perform at uh, on Fremont Street on Thursdays and Saturdays, that it's free. Yes. Right? Yeah, you know, I've been making a living for 30 years doing not, not, shows. Not, you're not free. <laughs> well, <yeah. laughs> it's free to the customers. <laughs> yes, and I've always wanted to uh, not yeah. make people feel like they had to buy tickets to go see me because mm -hmm. it's a party. And we, incidentally, sing. The, so we call them Zoe Boy parties, not concerts. Right. So, you know, depending on if we're at station casinos or at the M Resort, we do a lot of shows out at the M Resort, uh, they're free. And I've, essentially, I've made a living selling alcohol, quite bluntly, mm -hmm. uh, whereas most people sell tickets. But I'm trying to make the change. I'm trying to evolve into the mm -hmm. ticketed show. Like, my big band thing is a ticketed show. Um, and I love doing dinner shows because that's kind of a classic Vegas thing to do. And they, 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 they kind of still do that at the Italian that's American Club. That's what we do Club. there. Yeah. Uh, we've been at the Italian American Club now for uh, about two years. And... The way it works there is you come in, you have this incredible Italian buffet. Yeah, I mean, we should. I it's so it. beautiful. Before you go clear on, before, then, yeah, and then we do you, our Before thing. you go on, the Italian American Club, I should. Love that place. Let me do a little commercial for them. Mm -hmm. It's been around, I, I don't know, for as Since long the as, early 60s, yeah. As long as I can remember. My parents used to go there when, when they were alive, uh, when I first got here. And uh, it's a gem. It's a hidden gem in town. It's, it's, uh, it's really a. A flashback to, as what you're saying, old Vegas. It is. You, you, it, the food is good. It's um, it's it's casual. It's friendly. Um, you can eat uh, great great food and see a show. Um, I don't know and where else you that, can do uh, that in Vegas. Well, as soon as you walk in there, you can feel the vibes of this authentic mm -hmm. uh, Vegas style club where you know our heroes used to hang out there. As a matter of fact, but it's it's run by authentic old Vegas type guys, yeah. if you know what I mean. It, w funny little story, the, the guy that, one of the guys that owns it, his name is Ben. Mm -hmm. He sees me there two years ago attending a show to see a friend of mine. He comes up and he's like, hey, uh, Zoe Bowie, yeah, I've heard of you. Yeah. He goes, uh, we gotta get you in here, we're gonna start playing uh, soon here. When, I said, you know, Ben, I, I, I've always loved this place, I'd love to yeah. do it, maybe I'll consider it. And he goes, no, 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 kid, I, I didn't ask if. <laughs> no way. I said, when? When are you playing? And that was the start of a beautiful relationship. So, but, and that's, <laughs> been there every two months. And, 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 that's, um, and, that's, <laughs> and that's where you really can display the big band, um, Chris. Yes. And uh, we have a clip of that. Oh.
There it is. That's the one we love. The big band man. Every time you show a clip, yeah. I feel like I pulled something. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, it's, it's like, amazing. God, have you ever? You ever you fallen ever, ever fallen off stage? Uh, once. Yes, I, I I've been known for doing this silly little high karate kick thing. Mm -hmm. And there's been times where I, I that didn't go well. <laughs> and I, I went home in pain. <laughs> How, how big is your um, your repertoire of, uh, oh, of, of songs? Well, uh, with the party dance show, as I'd mentioned, we've been doing mm -hmm. that for 30 years straight. We haven't, we haven't had one weekend off, pr except for COVID. In uh, 30 years, we've done 6,000 shows. And that during that time, we built up quite a uh, stockpile of so hundreds mm -hmm. of songs that we could... But, you know, with that song, we, we just do little pieces of songs. And right. we run them together in medleys, kind of like a DJ does. So the... You know, right. the party never starts. So you get a little bit of everything. So hundreds, but then the big band thing, of course. You name a standard, we've done it, I'm sure. We'll you can it. catch uh, Chris Phillips uh, Thursdays and Saturdays, 10 p.m.? Uh, 10 p.m. on Thursdays, 11 to 2 in the morning on Saturdays. Hey, and it, it's a party. You want a party? And the cost is right there. And it's either there or at the, uh, the, the uh, Italian American Club. Well, I'm honored to be on the show again. Okay. I, thank you so much for having us. Thanks for being here, Chris. There are more and more trucks on the road, and there are so many more accidents. If you or your loved ones have been injured in a truck accident, you need to call me. Enough said. Call Ed. EdBernstein.com. If you've been injured, turn to someone you can trust. Enough said. Call Ed. Over the last 43 years, we've helped thousands of Nevadans hurt at work. We can help you.